The capuchins at the moment we know have been using the cashew processing tools for at least 700 years. In capuchin time, 700 years is about 100 generations. So the same thing in human time would be something like two, two and a half thousand years. Uh, and what we do find though is that over that period of time, despite them learning from each other how to do the behaviour, it doesn't have a lot of variation. They tend to use the same types of materials in the same ways. Unlike humans, who in the last two and a half thousand years have gone from obviously the Iron Age to where we are now. When a capuchin wants to eat a cashew nut, um, they generally bring the tools to the cashew tree. They often use a flat slab of sandstone and the sandstone makes a nice stable kind of table surface for them to work on. This is a, a cashew nut from Brazil that we have here and you'll see that it has quite a, quite a large shell on the outside and then inside that is the kind of light nut that we'd expect um, to see in the supermarket. In the same way we can find tools lying around, they can find the tools lying around cashew trees. Others are bringing them there, leaving them there, uh, becomes like a set of cutlery at a restaurant, it's just sitting there for you. And things they're looking for, are like on this tool, you have a nice flat surface on one side, that helps them control when they're striking and pounding. And they actually become quite quick at looking at an array of available stones, finding one that's big enough to have enough weight to crack the nut. The question was, would we be able to track that back in time uh, by excavating a site, by finding old tools, and then by recognising those tools in the past? And that will let us look at things like uh, whether they change, whether they innovate, how their technologies develop over time. Being able to actually watch the subjects of your research perform the behaviours, perform all the actions that you're trying to reconstruct in the past is immensely helpful and it is very exciting because they're also really quite unpredictable. They have their own lives going on. Sometimes you'll see them, for example, beginning to do something really interesting with their tools and then another monkey will come running in and, and there's a big fight or, or they have to leave for some reason or or they just fall asleep. So I mean, the, the process of gaining the knowledge is actually quite different between what we do now with the monkeys and what I've done in the past with just excavating dry remains. There's now no population of primates that use tools that haven't been severely curtailed by the activity of humans by farming and logging and things like that. So the potential for there to be a chimpanzee who would invent a microwave or, or a Boeing 747 really isn't there anymore and we have to accept that probably we are the chimpanzee that did that and, and live with that.